Sports Radio, 502-571-1080. Text machine, 772-774-5254 here at KS Bar and Grill. Happy to be joined by former cat. Well, I still call him. He's a cat dead at heart. Kellen Grady, who just finished his career here. Kellen in his matching green uh, sweatsuit. How you doing? Good, sir. Oh, we're going to turn you up a little bit. Let's see. Now try it. I'm good, thanks. Okay, thanks there you go. Me. Perfect. Uh, first of all, fun year. And really enjoyed having you. How much fun was it playing at Kentucky this past season? Man, it was, it was awesome. Uh, being able to play on the biggest stage and – in front of 20,000 people and, you know, have the experience of playing against the best teams in, in the country. What's the difference between playing at Davidson? And, again, that was, a, I'm sure, a great experience too, but playing in those gyms versus when you walk in and you're playing in Rupp every day. Uh, minus the times four factor of, of the home base, um, just the, the overall enthusiasm and, um, you know, the student section and, and – the, there was never any uncertainty whether the game would be sold out. It didn't have to be, you know, a great league game on Saturday or against Dayton or one of the better teams in the A-10 to, to assure that we have an exceptional fan base for a home game. Just so the, the consistency and, and the loyal enthusiasm was, was awesome. Did you like – I mean, our fan base is wild. Right, like I mean, sure. for 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 positive and negative, I mean they are. And it, do you did you like that? I mean, some guys love it. Some guys are like, this is a lot. What was it for you? I did. I think you can appreciate it. Um, you know, there's there's been a standard set here at Kentucky, especially with with Cal the last uh, 13 years or so. And you know, there's high expectations. And you know, if you come up short or, or if you don't exactly play to the standard, then and They'll let you know. Such an enthusiastic <laughs> fan base will, will let you know, and I think it's important to gain some perspective and learn how to channel that and, and, and take it with a grain of salt, but it's, it's hard to ignore the, the constant enthusiasm and the support that goes along with all, all the good times. So, If I were to say to you, what was the, your, your, your favorite or best moment during the year, what would it be? Man, that's tough to, that's tough to pinpoint. I'd say my... Favorite just in-game moment was um, that 13-0 run we went on against Alabama, and um, I hit that shot in the corner. Oh, that was yeah, the place went of, insane. A lot of I've heard from a lot of people that that was arguably the, the loudest they've heard up, and that was just a cool uh, thing to be a part of, just to see those couple of, games where you had, especially the Alabama and LSU home games, where you where uh, Ty Ty and, Se- and Se- Severe were out. And you and Davion had to basically be ball handlers. It felt like to me you looked comfortable in that role after a little bit, and that you kind of liked getting back to probably what you did a lot at Davidson. Am I right about that? Yeah, it, it was fun. It, it, I mean, I've played, I have experience playing point guard in college, and you know, I played it a lot in high school. So to be able to do that and, and play the whole game and, and kind of have a different role for a couple games was. Uh, it was, it was a new experience, and I got to have the ball in my hands a little more. Everybody so. likes that, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to complain about that. It was, it was fun. So there were a lot of highs. I mean, I, I think it's always good to talk about the highs. I, I, I thought the moment the season turned around for a positive for you all was out in Vegas when you played against North Carolina. I mean, I, I was at that game. You guys looked so smooth, and, and obviously Carolina ended up in the championship game, so that team was better than we probably even realized. Is that when you felt like it seemed like everybody started to find their roles on the team? A hundred percent. I think that. Uh, I think that's also when I kind of felt like I clicked in my season turnaround. And, and um, from a team standpoint, you know, we had just had that humbling loss to Notre Dame. Um, we played our non-conference schedule after the Duke game, and we were starting to find our, our roles and our rhythm a little bit. But I think we needed a, a real test and. Uh, a quality opponent to to really solidify the direction uh, in which we were going, and I think you know coming out in, in, in Vegas on a neutral court on CBS and, and beating Carolina the way we did kind of propelled the rest of the year for us, and I thought that was a, a real statement win for us at that time. And then I think the two best games you had this year were the games winning here by a zillion against Tennessee, and then going at Kansas. I mean, in those two games, 
it just felt like you guys were so locked in. And every time you got the ball, the right person was shooting and getting the shot. I mean, it, it was that like you thought kind of when you guys hit your peak? I don't think that's when we hit our peak, but I think that was uh, – we were very evidently – uh, playing really well and, and clicking on all cylinders, and I think that was exemplified perfectly in those games. Just the way we were sharing the ball and, and the pace we were playing at, and the way we were guarding as well. Um, you, know, you can't you can't be that hot throughout an entire season. Yeah, that's why I say I don't think we were at that was our peak. But um, those two games, we were we were certainly clicking on all cylinders, and the ball was finding everybody, and we shot well, we guarded well, the pace of the game was was great. We rebounded we had a, a grittiness and a toughness to us that I think was uh, just really st- stood out those two games but I think for for a long period of time for two or three months we were we were yeah. playing at an incredibly high level the last okay so so then you get the injuries and, you, and a lot of people didn't realize you talked about this yesterday in an article you got hurt you had or plantar fasciitis am I right fasciitis yeah fasciitis I'm not exactly a medical person unfortunately <laughs> I don't uh, plantar fasciitis is that right yeah. all right uh, you're the first by the way it's the first player we've ever had that was able to correct my t- terminology I like it so you can tell he's a smart kid um how much did that affect you? Because there did come a time, it reminded, for for those of us that have been a while, it reminded me of Devin Booker. So Devin Booker had this period where he did not miss a shot. And then towards the end of the year, still shot well, but it wasn't what it was. Do you think part of that was the, 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 the lingering injury for you? Uh, you know, it, it could have been. A, a, it's not something that I've I've blamed my shooting woes towards the end of the, the last couple of games on. Um I mean, it was brutal. I dealt with it all year. Uh, so I, you dealt with it all year, okay? Yeah, and I, I found a way to to go about it and, and try to get myself well enough for every game. But um, you know, I think it undoubtedly took a toll on me to a degree as as the season. Went people on. didn't know about that. I mean, I, it didn't. I like you know, not that you have to tell everybody, but people did. Pe- people didn't know about that. But you were playing with it all year. Correct. Yeah. Do you? Uh, I mean, was there ever a consideration during that period that you needed to take time off? No, it was. It was. You know, I I decided to play a fifth year. I did it at the like Utopia College Basketball, and I wanted to be a part of every game and 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 play for this fan base and play with my teammates. And if it was something that I could endure and go through, it was. It was. I mean, it, it was ultimately a decision I made back in the fall when. I decided not to take any time off and, and rest and, and see if I could get better. And you know, I had a spot to earn in the fall, and, and that was my main focus. And, and getting acclimated with my teammates um, was what I wanted to do. And then once the season got rolling, it was uh, something that I could bear and could deal with. Uh, like I said, it was it was brutal at times and yeah, um, all the time. But um, <laughs> what well, for people who've had, you know, Drew has that. I believe that's what he has, and he and he he has like a lingering. So I've seen how the pain that can be. Do you? Uh, all right. So you and you mentioned your teammates. I found you all to be maybe one of, if not the most likable teams we've had. I mean, part of it was you're like 55 years old, like right. So so I mean, you know, being the being the old guy on the team, but also you all just seem to have fun with each other. There was a maturity factor that over the last few years we really haven't had here because everybody's been so young. Was it? Was everyone as likable? Did you all really get along as well as it seemed like you did? What you guys saw was uh, the reality. We Good. had a, uh, an incredibly close group, and there was a camaraderie but, but within our team that um, I think was evident, obviously, to a lot of people. And uh, it, it was truly a... a accurate depiction of, of what we went through and, and and just the bond that we had together and, and the mix of experience and age and different personalities all really blend well together, frankly, from the summer. From the I just love, like, of this year. how much you all were on each other's side. Like when Bryce Hopkins had that game against LSU, you were one of the people. It just looked like you were so happy for him in those moments. Yeah, I mean, Bryce, he worked hard throughout the year and, He's talented, and you guys saw a great glimpse of that in that game. And um, You know, when I watch the film of every game, 
I do that after every game, and, and I think it's always cool to watch the bench reaction in the second yes. half to ha- when everyone scores. I agree. And if you if you watch it, it it's it's virtually identical no matter who scores, mm-hmm. and, and that to me shows a, a level of respect and appreciation for all players that runs through our team. I've always sort of said that's kind of how I judge how well teams are getting along. It's how the bench is like how the bench is when other people are succeeding. Because it's easy to be happy when you're succeeding. But when other people are succeeding and you're not even in the game and you guys were one of the best we've had in terms of it just feeling really genuine. It was. And it was from the our six man down to the guys that were playing sparingly in the rotation or and that's what like I said when I watch the film every game I, I'd really look at that in, um, in the second half because it's very easy to see and I, no matter who scored no matter who was on a on a run or whatever the circumstance was our bench was always equally enthused and excited for is Oscar as nice team. as he seems he seems like it's no he's a, he's a gentle giant he, he Maybe he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. It seems like it. It's almost like he can't be that nice. Like somebody, no, he is. Everybody's got to get what mad you, sometimes. What you, what you see is, is, Good. is what he is. Well, that's what everybody wants to hear. Right, you yeah. stick around for another segment. you yeah. got a chance. Yeah. Kellen's going to be signing autographs here at KS Bar tomorrow night at 6 o'clock to 7.30. We'll talk more about that. we got to talk about some of the down parts at the end. But I'll tell you. You're going to need insurance in your life, Kellen. You probably already need, like, we got AARP stuff. But at trustedchoice.com, they'll do your insurance so you can just do you. They'll help you find the right coverage with a local agent to give your needs and a choice for you. It's trustedchoice.com. Customize auto, home, life, or business insurance. More options, better value in your hometown at Trusted Choice. Does, dot com. Doesn't that sound good, Kellen? I have a trusted choice. Sounds great. I know. You look really happy about it. We'll take a break and be right back here at KS Bar. This is Kellen Gray. No, this is KSR with Kellen Gray. To talk to Matt Jones and the crew, call the Clark's Pump and Shop phone line at 502 571 1080 or 1 877 904 1080. So me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Big Blue and you. Kentucky Sports Radio on Talk Radio 1080. Welcome back to Kentucky Sports Radio. We're going to take your calls for Kellen here in just a second. 502-571-1080. Uh, you, all, you didn't get to play against Louisville, actually. So you didn't get no. to feel that hate. I wish you could have. heard about it, but no. I, we, yeah, that game got canceled. We did Western Kentucky instead, if I remember correctly. Yes, the, you're, you're exactly right about that. All right, we got to talk about the, the downside. What do you think happened in your mind in the St. Peter's game? Why did that result end up like it did? Because it was so shocking to so many people. Yeah, you know, I still can't pinpoint it exactly, but I think the simplest uh, reflection is uh, we didn't make shots. They made more shots than enough and enough shots to win, and we didn't get stops at pivotal moments when we needed to. There, There was a few points in the game where I think it was a lot of people probably watching thought we were about to pull away or I think we had a six point lead at the under four minute media timeout and um, you know we, we just you think you guys got tight like it felt like well I'll just tell you I mean I, I watched you guys and it felt like all year you guys had such a joy like during warm ups and stuff like everybody was just kind of Everybody was just it, – it, it seemed like you guys were so loose all the time, even early in the year when things weren't going great. I was not at that game, but I had someone who was there who had seen you all many times say it just felt different in the pregame, that you, that you, that you guys seemed a little tight and maybe a little nervous in ways they hadn't seen the rest of the year. Do you think that's fair or is that not true? Uh, I wouldn't uh... – Oh, well, exactly. I think that's an accurate assessment. I, I didn't feel a different vibe before the game or going through warm-ups. Um, I mean, we're, what about with three minutes left? Because, I mean, there is a lot of pressure on you all. They're the underdog in that situation. Right. Any- um, I mean, I think naturally that, yeah, that there's there's some pressure just to win a game, mm-hmm. regardless of the stakes or the opponent or 2C versus the 15 seed. But uh, well, they, they – Credit to them. I mean, they they made it to the lead eight. It's not like yeah, they we weren't. Lost. It's not like we lost. The it was just a complete fluke, and they weren't a good team. I mean, they made uh, they, they switched up. They did the matchup zone thing after playing 
virtually man exclusively for 37 minutes and they you know that was a new look for us and some of the things we were doing getting Oscar the ball towards the end of the game and then they we had to adjust to that and, and if they did that with eight minutes to go we probably by the five minute mark we would have found our our, our answer just a good our, move our rhythm and, and we probably would have got him out of that zone but, yeah you know Shaheen Holloway had a good plan going to switching up something trying to give him a new look and uh it was something we hadn't seen in a lot. There's not a ton of zone in the SEC, and, and um, you know they did the played zone. And I think when the ball got to the middle, they would match up to a man, and then we, you know we, we just we didn't do the things that we needed to do to close out the game, and we didn't get enough, enough pivotal stops. When we What's the do, locker so. room lo- like after that? I've been in I mean, losing locker rooms, and it's awful. Yeah, it's it's what you would imagine. Guys were heartbroken. Um, it's not the fashion in which we thought our, our season would uh, end like. And, 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 and you know, it, just to sort of reflect on it, it, it's kind of hard to describe what the locker room was like just as it was hard for us to process what just happened in that moment. You all beat the national champion by 20 on their home court, and it was not even really that close. Yeah, we beat the two teams in the national championship. But yeah, I mean, that has to combine. In some ways, does that make it hurt more? It does. It, it was made it harder to watch, too, just knowing the two teams playing for the uh, ultimate goal and, and it's kind of the epitome of success in college were two teams, in, which we beat by, I think it's like 47 or 48 points combined. So, yeah, it, it stung a little more. Um, you do the... It was very easy to, I'm sure, for all of us to do the well, what if we yeah. got over that hump, and, over that hump in the St. Peter's game. What could have happened? And but it's a part of life. It's what makes that tournament. It does. I think what other than the Super Bowl, it's the best sports event that people look forward I think it's to. Don't don't give the Super Bowl. I think it's better because you don't. Better. You're never going to get. I mean, look. I hate that it was us. I hate it. But that is what people tune in for. Exactly. In and some ways. It, it sucks that we were. It sucks that we were the It seems to be every year a team that's destined to hit that mid-major team. And we really had never done it, that, to be um, honest. I mean, you have to go back to like 82 before Kentucky had had one of those. Trying to make did you hurt a little more, huh? I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that. But do you? did you feel like, though, I, I thought after the game that our fans actually – handled it with the players much better than I would thought. Like, I didn't hear our fans blame any of the players. Did you still feel support, or did I not see stuff that was out there? I deleted Twitter as when I turned my phone off airplane mode after every game. I think that was the first thing I did just to brace myself in case. Um, so I, I, I don't really know. Wow, you, you felt like you had to delete Twitter? so you Well, it's, have- it's just I didn't think – I thought there was the potential for some stuff that just isn't – like why – why uh, put yourself through it? that or, 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 go, or go through that. So I just um, – That's a very mature way to look at it. it uh, I've had Twitter notifications off all year. That's just something I've, I've done kind of through my college career. I, I just – I think it it's easier to try to stay focused. Stay in the moment. What's important. And it's less important to consider – Did you like being the team's out. granddad? I, I embraced the nickname, um, kind of what comes with it. Uh so yeah, it, it was it was new, obviously for me, um, but no, I, I liked it. I, I, uh, I mean, it was what I always said: the guys that could buy a beer called me KG. The guys that couldn't um, <laughs> called me Granddad. <laughs> I like that. Let's take a call quickly. Who's on there? Who's on there, John? Jay. Jay, what do you got, Jay? Hey, man, what's going on? Hey, uh, Kellen, thanks, man, for for all that you did and putting in all that work this year, man. We fan base really appreciated appreciated you and loved watching you play basketball dude i just want to say that first thank you man i, I really appreciate it thank you for your and then um the matt i wanted to i wanted to ask you a question and maybe having a player on there could help with this uh or or speak to it but i, I wanted to say about cal i felt like when cal first got to kentucky 
that he felt privileged to have this job. I, I don't want to. I tell you what, with the player here, I don't want to get into all that stuff. We'll talk. I t- if you want to hang on, Jay, we can talk about it in the second hour or not. But I hope you understand. I don't want to do that with Kellen can, here. Okay. I completely understand. I'll hang on if that's all right. Then. All right. Just hang on. We'll get to you after that. Uh, talk to me about just Cal, your relationship with him and what you thought of, of, of him. It, was, he, was he who kind of you thought he was when he came? Yeah, we had, we had a great relationship. I, I I've always had a lot of respect for him. My dad admired him. I had a lot of respect for him being from Massachusetts and seeing what he did at UMass. And, um, you know, we've always appreciated Coach Cal and, and never, frankly, thought I would ever get to play for him. Yeah, reality that I could play for him, like, ever. I don't think that was even a discussion once at a dinner table or <laughs> in a car ride home from an AAU game. I'm or, sure, yeah. Um, but, you know, he and I, had we had a good relationship. Um, you know, I think he he kind of trusted that he didn't have he could treat me as a as an adult granddad as a guy that yeah. has had experience and will listen and, and do what he's told. And you know, at, the, at the end of the year meeting, he he said uh, he appreciated me and that I, I got his jokes. And he's that's true, he hasn't had many. All right, I want to quickly talk about tomorrow, six o'clock to seven thirty. You're going to be here signing autographs. Uh, I know you're excited. Are you excited to meet the fan base? Yeah, absolutely. It's one thing I I love doing. Um, I just lesser scale at Davidson, but my experience here at Kentucky, just interacting with the fans and you know allowing people to to be exposed to to who I am as a person, and then just being able to be around me. I think that's a lot of people love watching the game and, and watching the players, but you know we all have personalities and. We're all normal guys for the most part, and it, it, it's, well, you can be- it's always fun, and, and it's, it's a rewarding feeling to be able to interact with people. You can be here tomorrow, 6 to 7.30, with Kellen. Get uh, autographs and pictures. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, man. Good luck, man. Thanks for having me. We will take a break and be right back. Myron will join us again. This is KSR.